This is a segment of a, a monthly analysis that we review and um, zoomed in here on, on a, an area to show you really, although we look at annual numbers and fiscal numbers, we analyze our staffing every single month. And this is what we call our 18 month projection. <coughs> The blue line is the staffing number that's established each spring in the board presentation. But the, the red line, as you can see, is the actual number of full-time employees for each month. So we're having a, a steady rate of attrition. As I said, you go back to January 1st of 2009, we have 971, we're at 919. And we also look at the pending hires that we, we plan those vacancies we, we plan to fill as well as the expected retirements and expected attrition we anticipate by the end of may of this year we'll be at 907 and our goal at the end of fiscal year uh, june 2010 is 905. so a, a lot of numbers but there's other things obviously you have to consider beyond uh, numbers i will point out that our turnover is about five and a half percent uh, any given month, we average between four and five employees. That's been steady for the last couple of years. If you go back five years or so, historically our turnover has been between seven and a half and eight. So relatively steady, but we can see the impact of the economy has, has reduced that turnover by a couple of percentage points. As I mentioned, uh, although we, we look at the numbers and we look at the plan, there are a lot of considerations around that, just the, the, the numbers. And one of the things that we're constantly reviewing is the external utility <coughs> labor market. You all may remember a couple of years ago, there was a lot of articles in the press about the projected uh, decline in utility workforce, particularly in the electrical area. And uh, I think American Public Power Association at that point in 2008 predicted that over the next five to 10 years that electrical workers were eligible to retire about half of that workforce. Now the economy has slowed those projections down, but the consensus is that's been delayed, not eliminated. So if we're looking at our staffing, we have to be aware of sort of the world uh, around us on that. But if you look specifically at our KUV statistics, we compare favorably to those national norms. Our average age at KUV is 45, which is about three years younger than the average age nationally for utility companies. And um, we do expect, however, in the area of our electrical <coughs> workers, our line workers, our troublemen, our foremen, that uh, looking at our expected attrition in that area, that we could have about a quarter of those employees eligible to retire. So I think it's a good indication of uh, why we implemented the apprentice program in 2008. We have another apprentice class planned in 2011. So even though the overall goal is to reduce our full-time staffing, this demonstrates there are those critical areas where we could experience some gaps and we want to keep an ample supply and ample supply of those skill sets as we move forward with that. Uh, one note on engineering recruiting, obviously that is a key critical skill for us and uh, we work with UT, Tennessee Tech, look at trends with that and there's been a slight decline in uh, the number of engineering students specializing in power system engineering and electrical engineering. So it was pretty, pretty constant but there's been a decline there. So we have a lot of community outreach efforts to try to educate high school students, for example, about uh, utility careers. In fact, in the coming weeks, we have area math and science high school teachers coming to KUB to talk to, to Gabe and Julie and our engineering staff so that we can make the teachers aware of those engineering careers. Because sometimes it's just a, a question of the awareness. They didn't realize, hey, is this a possibility? Could this be a career path? <coughs> so there's some factors externally we, we review to, to analyze our pool size. And as I said, it's not about just reducing your base payroll costs. You also have to manage your overtime costs, your contracting costs, to make sure that is, one is declining and you're not just increasing the other. It's really about yeah, that was one of my questions. What about your subcontracting costs? Have they stayed the same, or 
<coughs> the the O&M contracting cost is about fourteen and a half million, and that's been fairly constant the last two calendar years. If you go back four years, it's uh, declined about fifteen percent. So we're not seeing an uptick um, in our in our contracting costs. We haven't discontinued appliance repair, for example, only to right outsource it. Yes. So uh, we are remaining flat with our contracting costs. And again, the process we use to take all of this data and, and analyze it is workforce planning where we project our demand, the skills we're going to need, and look at the supply, the available pool of, of workers, and we anticipate gaps. And that's really described in, in this chart. This is just a summary. We conduct what we call a critical positions um, assessment. And, and basically, we go through <coughs> what do we need, what's difficult to find for recruiting, and what's hard to retain, either because of market conditions, expected retirements. And each position, if they are challenging in those three categories, then we deem them to be critical. So as we are reducing our overall staffing plan, we want to be aware that in these particular areas, we may want to level that out and replace <coughs> those positions as vacancies arise. And you see it's the jobs we've been talking about, engineering, system operations, gas and construction technicians, plant technicians, and our electrical workers. One note, you'll see business management analyst, which is our professional category that has an asterisk there. And that's because it's not, uh, that's our classification, our professional classification. But within that, we have several different disciplines, accounting, HR, procurement, regulatory compliance. So you really even have to look beyond the classification and look at those particular disciplines. And for example, regulatory compliance, those analysts, a little bit more challenging to find that skill set. That's clearly a critical need that we have. So as we're looking at our staffing plan as vacancies arise, even though our overall goal is to, to leverage those professional skills, that is an area that we may want to consider replacing and, and filling that vacancy. And we have a chart in a minute that sort of demonstrates that philosophy. Uh, one note, I always have to qualify this. Uh, this is not to say that the customer service skills, the accounting skills, the HR skills, IT communications are not important to our success, because they clearly are. This is just pointing us in a direction about where we have challenging um, situations, finding the skill sets, pool size. I'll give you an example just briefly. In 2009, we did an electrical engineering position and we received uh, 38 applications. And we felt pretty good because two years before, if we received 30, then we were felt, felt that was a positive thing. So we got these applications and uh, actually hired two uh, external electrical engineers we also bid in 2009 a part-time customer service representative, and we received 448 applications, roughly 10 times as many. Now, not everyone meets the minim minimum qualifications, <coughs> but it's typically not as challenging to find those generalist sk skills in the workforce as it is sometimes in utility-specific jobs. So what, what do we do with uh, the critical skills after we've identified those classifications that, that where we want to maintain the staffing? Well, we, we convert that really to a plan going forward by category. And you can see the categories in blue are those critical jobs where we want to maintain our staffing levels and the uh, administrative, for example, the hair professional, professional. Those are areas where we have more general skills and we think we can leverage those skills throughout KDB as we change our processes. So you'll see some reductions in those areas as we're maintaining uh, in the critical areas. And I will point out, this is a guideline and a framework. We look at every vacancy, every month, the individual skill sets, but this does sort of serve as, as a framework for when we make decisions to make sure we're filling those critical skills. So how are we doing? Well, if you look at uh, the end of February of this year, as I said, we had 919 full-time employees, and you can see the number